Hi, welcome to my recording at Vito Hub Microsoft X5. The recording you're just watching is about adaptive cards that you can use in Microsoft Teams based processes. My name is Tomasz Poszetek. I'm business applications MVP. I'm an expert in Microsoft X5 fields in SharePoint, Power Platform, Power Automate, business processes, and so on and so on. If you're interested in what I'm doing, in what I'm writing about, what I'm contributing to the community, follow me on Twitter, YouTube, wherever you can, uh, and type aka.ms slash poshitech in your browser to find all the social links that I own. Okay, enough about me. Uh, the agenda for this recording is quite short because I don't have a lot of time. So first, I will briefly tell you about the story that is behind adaptive cards in Microsoft. Then we'll just jump very fast to message cards so that you have the big picture on how this whole technology was born. Then we'll jump over to adaptive cards and in the end, I'll tell you about the future and what we can expect from the new releases of adaptive cards. So are you ready? Are you with me? Okay, let's roll on. When we're watching at the modern communication web pages or modern communication applications, we can clearly identify the, the, the content that actually is within that page, but we can say that it is coming from a different source. However, that content is seamlessly embed in the experience of that web page or that application so that the user in the end has the feeling that it actually belongs to this place. So for example, the video in YouTube or wherever you can see it, that's the same video coming from YouTube. However, its experience, its embedding on the different hosts is just showing it as it is just a part of that content. So in the end, when we would like to somehow define what the cards are, we can say that this is the technology that is being used to display the content that we are creating inside the host experience. And how this history started on how this technology actually originated was born at Microsoft. So first in 2016, Microsoft realized that they have a couple of teams working on actually the same technologies. They had both framework team working on something similar to adaptive cards as we know today. They had an exchange team working on actionable messages. They had Windows team working on Windows tiles or those tiles that we can find in the Windows timeline. And so they decided to merge those teams and so to create one unified team, one single team that is going to work on a single technology that is going to be then shared across these teams instead of creating some kind of a competence, uh, co competing, competing between those teams to uh, produce their own technologies and then to decide which to use when. And so 2017 is the year that Matt Hiddinger and David Klo set up a team. And then later that year, they came up with the first release of message cards, the technology that was created directly from actionable messages. I'll tell you just in a while why. And then later on next year, 2018, somewhere around June, they came up with the first release of adaptive cards. So the technology that we are using today. So who are they? Who is Matt and, Hiding, uh, Matt and David? First, Matt Hiddinger, he joined Microsoft, well, in 2017, as the team was created. He's now the principal product program manager. And before he joined Microsoft, he was working for high-profile consumer brands. He learned a lot about user experience, user expectations, mobile applications, and this knowledge he brought into the team. So he's focusing on the experience of how the users are using adaptive cards and what can be done to uh, make that interface and that experience even better. He's also a very, let's say, social person. He is speaking at a number of user groups across the world, and he's also a very active Twitter person. So if you have any questions to him, simply try to find him on Twitter or ask him a question, and he'll ask, answer really shortly. On the other hand, we have David Klo, who is working for Microsoft for over 15 years already, and his history ever since was related to exchange teams. So he's, for example, one of the creators or even the, the leader creator of uh, EWS web services. And then after he joined uh, Adaptive Cards team, 
he somehow focused on the back end. So he created the Adaptive Cards Designer. He was focusing and creating the Actionable Messages Designer. And now he's working on unification of the JSON schema between Adaptive Cards that we can post to Microsoft Teams, for example, and Adaptive Cards that can be posted as Actionable Messages to Outlook Messages. And well, David is also Principal Program Manager, and they together are leading the team, Matt from the front end, David from the back end. What makes the cards so special? Well, first of all, they natively render or any platform that has SDK implemented. Thanks to that, they automatically adopt to host user experience. So it doesn't matter for us as authors if we create this adaptive card to be displayed on a mobile or in a browser or maybe on a desktop. It is the host responsibility to actually grab the contents and display it inside that experience so that the user has a feeling that this content actually belongs to that host and it's not taken from elsewhere. And thanks to that, this technology is really low cost because we don't need to focus on creating a different or separate um, layout or uh, interface per each host, per each channel that we want this adaptive card to be posted. We need only to focus on the content and then the host is taking care of the rest. And also this is a very safe and secure technology because the adaptive card is just JSON and then it has its schema. So once host is rendering the adaptive card, it is checking whether the schema is, uh, sorry, whether the content, whether it is JSON is valid against the schema. And then if there is anything that is not in the schema or is just somehow malformed, then it is not being rendered or is being rendered as a plain text. So therefore, if someone would try to um, inject kind of a malicious code into the adaptive card, then it won't be executed. Now, adaptive card is not only technology to uh, to be used as is, because the SDK of adaptive cards is an open source project. It is hosted on a GitHub. It has extensible schema. So if you're a developer, you can take the schema, you can open it, you can add your own functionalities and your own definitions if you need to. Plus, adaptive cards are not only used to display content to be consumed by the end users. They are also used to gather feedback, to gather inputs from end users. So we have actions to submit cards. We have actions to open URLs. We have actions to toggle parts of the cards. Also, we have fields. We have input fields, checkboxes, radio buttons, date fields, and so on and so on, so that we can create as well forms within those cards that the users can use to provide a feedback. And also from the very, very beginning, this technology is um, supporting all the uh, text-to-speech applications, so it can be even used by the people with some kind of dis disabilities. All right, so first the message cards. They were created on top of actionable messages back in 2018 or even 17, because Martin, uh, David Glow, well, as I said, he was working for the Exchange team. So that technology, what he was working on, was somehow like a legacy, so he brought it in. Um, but well, it's not the technology that passed, so don't use it. Now then, Adaptive Cards was created on top of, it as a successor of message cards, and it inherited all the best functionalities, all the good things, plus, thanks to over two years of intensive work on this technology, it is now a very much more advanced uh, project technology and functionalities. And well, you'll just look how it, you, you will just see how it works in, in productive environment. So adaptive cards SDK can be found today in the most of Microsoft 365 communication application, communication software. So you can find it in Outlook, you can find it in Teams, in WebChat, so the, uh, the bot framework, you can find it in Contana and in Windows Timeline. Plus, uh, as the rumors say, as the roadmap for Power Platform says, they will be also available for Power Virtual Agents in January 2021. Yes. All right, but this is the SDK that is built in Microsoft 365 applications. However, thanks to that, the SDK is the open source. You can actually grab it and use in your own applications. Now, speaking about your own applications, the SDK is available for the majority of an open source programming platform. So you can find it for Android, for iOS, and most importantly, you can find it in JavaScript. So actually you can create any kind of application, a web application that is using JavaScript to display contents. And so you can use SDK to actually build entire interface just using that technology. You don't need to focus on creating some fancy DOM elements really. All right. Um, speaking about the schema of the adaptive cards, it's quite simple. Um, so this schema is to, for the version 1.0. 
since then, what has changed, uh, the major difference is that the actions, so that we have here at the bottom, below the body, can be actually uh, defined anywhere within the card. We have a container called an action set, and it can be put anywhere within the card, so we can have those buttons, those form elements, anywhere inside. Now, the schema is built basically from three major elements. We have containers, like the container edits, uh, fact set, um, image set, uh, column set and action set. So those sets are the containers where we can put specific number, specific uh, controls. Then we have the controls like text field, rich text field, um, media and image. And in the end, we also have inputs. So like input text field, radio button, check button, date field, and so on and so on. And then based on all these elements that we can use in the adaptive cards design, we can actually create our own fancy adaptive card. So how to design an adaptive card? Well, the best address to start with, let me show you, is to go to uh, the adaptive cards. Yeah, is to go to adaptivecards.io slash designer. And well, this is the product that uh, David Claw has created. And right here, you can start from the new card. So you can create an existing template and then customize it, like for example, this one, or you can start from blank. The next important thing is that you have to choose the host application. So for which host you're trying to design this card. And then actually you just need to drag and drop containers or elements from the picker to the canvas to design a canvas. Once you are done with the designing of the adaptive card, on the right hand side, you need to define some properties to those elements. And then at the bottom, you have a fully working JSON code that you can simply copy paste into your Power Automate actions. On the other hand, we also can create actionable messages. For those, we have a different designer. It's called the Actionable Messages Designer. And here again, you can start from an existing template or from a blank card. Once you start designing, the interface is a little bit different. So we have container and elements at the top that we can just choose and then drag and drop as well in the canvas. And then Again, on the right hand side, we have all the properties of those elements. And here at the bottom, there is also the JSON code generated of this actionable message that we can grab and send to our Outlook, or we can directly send it from here. So we also have this opportunity or the functionality to send this card to our inbox. All right, then. So that was about the actionable messages designer. So right now, actually, it's the time that I show you a demo. Are you ready for that? I hope you are. Okay, let me just go back to my uh, to my workflows. So the demo here is about processing an invoice. Basically, the scenario is that the front desk has an application that they need to use to upload a scanned invoice. Now, once the invoice is uploaded, it is being taken care of by the model built in AI Builder. The model is trained to identify fields on that invoice. So once it recognizes the fields, then it is being sent for approval. Once it is sent for approval, the Power Automate picks up that contents and it's generating adaptive card and actionable message that are being sent in parallel branch to Microsoft Teams channel that is being used by accountancy team where the accountancy team can actually approve that uh, invoice. And on the same time, in the same time, it is being sent into the inbox of the main or lead accountant so that that person can approve this invoice as well inside their Outlook message. So let me show you how it works. First, I need to upload a scan invoice. So this is the invoice that has been prepared. Now it's being analyzed by the AI Builder. And just in a short while, it should show the confidence with which it recognizes the fields. All right, so it has recognized the fields, sometimes with a lower, sometimes with a higher confidence, but well, I'm okay with that. So the next thing is I need to send for approval. All right, it was sent. So right now, me as a, well, in the channel dedicated for accountancy team, there is the new adaptive card created and sent. 
And me as an accountant, I can see all the details from that invoice actually in place. So I don't have to navigate anywhere elsewhere. I can just work within Teams. I can contribute and collaborate with other members from a team and even discuss about this adaptive card, I mean, about this invoice. So that others can see it. And then finally, someone has to simply click approve or reject. Also, we can see all the items that were present on the invoice. So all the information we might need is present here. So right now I'll just hit approve. Now, one thing that is very important here is that once I do that, the card is going to be closed and replaced by the confirmation one. However, we are unable to actually design that confirmation card. So this is just being sent a default design from the flow bot and we can do nothing about that. Apart from showing a short custom text like this one here. So this, thank you for your input. This is a custom text that I can define. However, I can, I have to do this prior to um, receiving the information from the card. So I cannot use here any information that were input by the user once they were completing the, uh, closing the card, right? So this is just a fixed text defined in advance. Now, on the other hand, as said, there is, uh, there is that accountant leader who was sent an email with all the information from that adaptive, uh, from uh, that invoice as well. So what that person can see in his inbox, right? So there is this uh, actual message. And again, here, that person has all the information. It's almost the same design of the card. There are just small differences in the schema between uh, the message, the adaptive card in Outlook and the adaptive card in Teams. The majority of the differences is focused around the buttons. So in adaptive card in Teams, we, for example, cannot define the um, target where the contents should be sent once user hits the button because it is always being sent to the host application, the flow button in this, in this case, that is handling that request. Here in actionable message, we can define where this form should be submitted. And then in the receiver of this request, we can also define the response so that, for example, I can say, close this card with a confirmation one. So once this user hits approve, the card has been closed as well. But in this case, in case of actionable message, I was actually able to take a full control over how this confirmation card is going to look like. All right, so let me show you how it works. First, I need to go into my Teams, uh, into my Power Automates, into Solutions. And I have here the flow that is called approve invoice. So it has been triggered three minutes ago. That is correct. So what this flow is doing is first is taking all the contents sent from power, from, from power apps to the power automate. So all the JSON, uh, generated by the AI builder. And then it's actually building the headers of two adaptive cards. First one that is going to be sent to Microsoft Teams and then the Second one, the actionable message that is going to be sent to Outlook. Now, one important thing about the actionable message is this originator ID. This information you can obtain while registering a new um, provider here in actionable email developer dashboard. So without registering this provider, without having this uh, originator ID that is permitted to send actionable messages to users within your organization, this actionable message won't be even displayed inside the other user's inbox. So just register a provider and use this originator ID so that you'll be able to send those cards to Outlook inboxes. Now, the next thing that is going to happen right now is that um, the Power Automate is parsing the items from the AI reader, so the invoice items. And then for each item is simply concatenating it and adding it as a part of a JSON of the final adaptive card. Now, once this is done, uh, it is sending an adaptive card to Microsoft Teams. And in the same time, it is sending a different adaptive card with this script application adaptive card plus JSON to users Outlook, to the Outlook, um, to John Researcher's inbox. Now, once the adaptive card here is approved or rejected, then there is a different information sent. So once it was uh, it was rejected, it is, it is sending an email about the rejection. If it was approved, 
uh, there is information sent that is approved. And the last thing that should happen as well is that the child flow is being triggered to trigger RPA process so that information from this invoice is being stored in a legacy application. However, for purpose of this uh, demo, I just turn this off because this is taking too much time to execute. So that's it. Now, on the other hand, you saw that there was this actionable message that once I hit approve, it was replaced by something different. And this is it. Um, sorry, uh, this is here. So that's a uh, power automator is being triggered by the actionable message by HTTP request. And once it gets the details, it also checks if this is uh, approve or reject. And then if the, it was uh, not uh, rejected, then it is sending again an adaptive card, a confirmation card that is being displayed instead of that original one present in the first place. So with this scenario, I've been using the action that is called post an adaptive card to a team's channel and wait for the response. Instead of that card, instead of that action, we have three others present in Microsoft Teams adaptive cards stack of actions. First is the one you can see. The second one is the same, but post the, uh, the card to a team's channel and wait for the response. Now, these two actions let you to define your own custom card and send it to team's user, team's channel, and then grab the response. The other two actions are nearly the same. They also allows you to post a message to uh, team's channel or team's user. However, they're not waiting for the response. So if you design their a card that has a form within and you would try to hit the button submit, the flow button will always return you with an error because there is no process waiting for that response. All right. So um, having that said, let's get back to the adaptive cards presentation. Now, the next thing I want to tell you and I want to show you is the templating. With the version 1.2, we are granted, we are given a cool new functionality that is called the adaptive card templating language. With this functionality, we have a richer design integration because we can actually embed in adaptive card design. Placeholders are going to be replaced by actual data. It also helps us to simplify the workflow development because we don't need to hard code any information within the card. We can just put their uh, expressions and placeholders that will be then replaced by the uh, during the rendering process as with actual data. Also, um, this is present in the SDK. And finally, there is uh, another different a separate project uh, going on at Microsoft at the team that is focused on creating some sort of a templating service that is going to uh, give users the possibility to have a single place where they that they could call and then grab the template for a specific purpose and then they would have a single place to store all the adaptive card templates contribute on them collaborate on them and then reuse them so when we think about adaptive card that we have all the information fixed like here the uh, numbers right, the, the open, the, the high, the low information about the stock. This is all fixed. So if you would like to change anything, you would need to again go into adaptive cards uh, and then change this design, the JSON of the adaptive card. Now, what if we would be able to simply replace those fixed uh, parts of the information with kind of a placeholders that can be then replaced during the rendering process with actual data coming from a different JSON? And in the end, simply generate the same looking adaptive card, but being really a dynamic card, not a fixed one. On the other hand, we also have the adaptive card templating language. We have expressions that helps us not only to replace the items, the, the placeholder with static information, but to bring some kind of dynamism into these, um, into the design. So for example, to use loops, to use conditions, to use, um, date formatting, number formatting, and so on and so on. So with the uh, templating language expressions, we are also able to create a more dynamic adaptive card that will help us to really uh, create a very dynamic card without a need to every time edit it, change it, or just put some kind of a expression or logic within Power Automate or your own custom code. And so when we think about that uh, design that I've created for uh, my invoice processing, my invoice approval, I had to really spend a couple of moments to actually design that card and to use this loop to add all items back to the design and finally to publish it. It took me an hour or even two to design that. 
So instead, I would be able simply to create that kind of an adaptive card, put some placeholders with, or, you know, in, in places that I will be using to display actual contents, plus also to define, for example, a repetitive or repeating table that will be uh, replaced by the items. Uh, what I'm also using here in this design is this condition. So, for example, here, the total number is going to be, I mean, this field is going to be visible only if the total number is going to be above 5,000. What is also important here about this card is that I don't actually need to create any kind of a loop to display those items because the data here is the type of a table so the JSON uh, that is holding the data is a type of a table, then the adaptive card uh, language, expression language, or the templating language will know, will know that it has to display and repeat this definition the number of times the number the rows are present inside here. So now once I hit to switch the card from the design mode into preview mode, you'll see that in just a short while, this card has been populated and it looks like directly the same that uh, was the one that I crafted in Power Automate. What is also important here is that because the ALBeader is returning information in a JSON format, therefore I will be nearly directly able to just grab that JSON response and use it as a data input, as a data scope to my adaptive cards. But unfortunately, this technology is not yet supported by uh, Microsoft Teams. So stay tuned and well, let's keep fingers crossed that it will be uh, present or available very soon. All right. The last thing um, I'm going to show you is, well, something about the future. So what we can expect from the nearest future. Today, adaptive cards are available in the version 1.3. It has been released like September, sorry, uh, August this year. So it's quite fresh, however, very stable. Now, the two versions before, so version 1.1 and 1.2, they brought us some cool new features, functionalities, for example, the media support. So we are able to actually embed a video or audio inside adaptive card and play directly from there. This is also something that not yet supported by Microsoft Teams. We also have base 64 image support. So if you have an image that is stored somewhere that uh, in a location that requires authentication, therefore, when you display adaptive card, it would really likely not display the image because the, the process that is going to uh, try to reach that image will have the 401 access denied. However, instead of providing the image via the URL, you can as well convert it to the data URI and simply provide it as a base64 string. So that's also a cool new uh, functionality. Also, we are given those inline actions, so the ability to use the action set to put actions anywhere within the canvas. Now, with the version 1.3, one of the most desired and expected or weighted, awaited functionalities was the advanced input validation. With that, when we are creating a form, we can actually define which fields are required, what kind of information are we waiting for, for example, email or number or date. Plus, we'll be also given the functionality to use regex expression to even validate the input data against the pattern uh, so that we'll really have the functionality to create forms, more advanced forms, and then be sure that what user is typing in is the data that we're expecting to receive. Wow, that has been a lot. Now, um, the team is also working on something on version 2.0, which is called the vNext. And with that, there is going to be even more awesomeness added to templating language. There is also going to be added new binding scope. So for example, uh, data binding scope or device, device binding scope which will give the adaptive card the information where it is actually being displayed. So even imagine you will be able to actually display uh, different information, different data, different images based on whether this is Android or iOS or maybe a web uh, based host. So this will give you again, even more flexibility um, when speaking about what to display to whom. And well, that's it. Today in Microsoft Teams, which is very important, we have a version 1.2 deployed of the SDK. However, due to some limitations of Microsoft Teams itself, uh, not all functionalities of the version 1.2 are supported. So for example, this 
media support and templating language are not actually fully supported. And there is also a number of other functionalities that are present in version 1.1, 1.2, however, not yet uh, available for us as designers to use within Microsoft Teams. And well, having that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you really enjoyed this short recording about Adaptive Card in Microsoft Teams. If you're interested or if you have any questions and you'd like to reach me somehow, simply find me on YouTube, find me on Twitter, find me on my blog or on LinkedIn, or simply type aks.ms slash poshitech and ask me any questions around the technologies I'm working with, and I'll be really glad to answer and to help you. Once again, thank you very much.